I need hydrazine for a project I'm working on, and since hydrazine is so toxic, I'm going to make the much less toxic salt, hydrazine sulfate. To get started, I dissolve 32 grams of sodium hydroxide in 250 milliliters of water and put it in the freezer. Meanwhile, I dissolve 0.75 grams of gelatin in 15 milliliters of distilled water. Gelatin is a crucial ingredient here as it will favor the production of hydrazine rather than ammonium chloride. Once the gelatin is done dissolving, I then dissolve 22 grams of urea in another 40 milliliters of hot distilled water. These two are then mixed together thoroughly and this step is done. Next I'm going to take my sodium hydroxide solution that's cooled down to 0 degrees celsius and add it to 250 milliliters of 10% bleach that's also been chilled to 0 degrees celsius. It's important to do it this way as the heat produced by the dissolution of sodium hydroxide can destroy the hypochlorite in the bleach. Anyway this is put on high stirring and I then add my urea solution to my bleach. The bleach and hydroxide immediately catalyze a Hoffman rearrangement of the urea to an isocyanate intermediate. This immediately reacts with water to form carbamic acid which which is neutralized by excess hydroxide to form carbon dioxide gas and hydrazine. Every step of this reaction is technically reversible, but CO2 is either sequestered by excess sodium or bubbles out of solution which pushes the reaction to completion. Eventually though, this will settle into an equilibrium and the bubbling will stop. At this point, the beaker is transferred to a hot plate and heated to 85 degrees celsius to push the reaction to completion. It's really important not to go too far above 85 degrees celsius as hydrazine will begin to vaporize at 114 degrees celsius which would be a bad time. Anyway, I maintain 85 degrees celsius for 5 minutes, take it off the hot plate, put it in the freezer, and chill to 0 degrees celsius. I then very slowly and under constant stirring add to it a 50% sulfuric acid solution that's been chilled to 0 degrees celsius as well. The sulfuric acid will react with the hydrazine sulfate and sodium hydroxide to form hydrazine sulfate and sodium sulfate. Hydrazine sulfate has a solubility in water of about 30 grams per liter at room temperature, so keeping this as cold as possible is important to maximize my yield. To that end, I transferred this to an ice bath for the rest of the addition, and this video is in real time, so this is how fast my additions were. Once the addition of sulfuric acid is complete, I cut the stirring to allow the hydrazine sulfate to settle out, which can then be collected by vacuum filtration. After the vacuum filtration, my product is transferred to a drying dish and dehydrated in a vacuum desiccator for about 24 hours. I also want to note that vacuum filtration works really well for hydrazine sulfate, which I'm not used to. I'm used to every single thing I try to make, gumming up my vacuum filter and having to spend hours on gravity filtration, so this was nice. In any case, my final yield after vacuum desiccation was 21 grams, which represents roughly a 50% yield, which is pretty good for this method. This can also be recrystallized to remove the sodium sulfate impurities, but they're extremely minor and I'm not going to bother. Anyway, that's the entire process. I've included my own reaction mechanism that I made for this. Sorry if it sucks, it's my first time using the software. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed this process, and if you did, consider giving me a follow.